theyeshiva.net. So welcome everybody to a new class, a new shir, in one of the very important and powerful books of Musar, of Jewish ethics and spirituality, known as Toymed Vaira, the palm tree of Dvorah. This class is dedicated in the merit for a complete and speedy recovery from Binyamin Yisrael Ben Chanita, for Yechiel Sholem Mardechai, Malka Nechamahena, and David Chaim Ben Tzipora. May they all have a Refua Shlema, Refua Kreva, complete and speedy recovery, and many, many long, happy, healthy, incredible, prosperous years filled with good health, good spirit, and joy. Before we begin inside, this is going to be a few words of introduction. This is going to be a 10-minute class. It's going to be a few times a week. This new book that we're going to begin learning, the Sefer Timer Devira, Palm Tree of Devira, was written by one of the greatest Kabbalists in Jewish history, a man known as the Ramak, R-A-M-A-K, Ramak, which is really an acronym, it's three letters, Reish Mem Kuf, which was an acronym of his full name, Rabbi, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. Ramak is Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. Cordovero is, a, is probably, he was named Cordovero because his family came from Spain from the city of Cordova. By the way, that's the city where Maimonides, where Rambam came from, and many other great Jews came from there. Apparently, they came from Cordova, and thus the name is Cordovero. He lived in Svas, and he was a tremendous, tremendous scholar, a prolific writer, an author, and a great soul, one of those great souls of Jewish history that made its its mark on the eternal landscape of Jewish learning, Jewish scholarship, the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism and spirituality, which is basically the theology, the under underlying program of what Yiddishkeit is. Rabbi Shekhar Devera was a student of the great Rabbi Yosef Karo. Rabbi Yosef Karo was the author of the Shulchan Aruch, the code of Jewish law known as the Beis Yosef. He wrote a commentary on the Rambam called Kesef Mishnah, a commentary on the Torah called Beis Yosef, a Shulchan Aruch, a code of law, and one of his students was Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. He was also a student of the great Tzvah scholar Rabbi Yaakov Beirav, Marie Beirav. He was a brother-in-law of Rabbi Shloyma El Kabatz. Rabbi Shloyma El Kabatz is the composer of L'Chadoidi, that beautiful poem that we all say Friday night, L'Chadoidi, Likra Skala, Pnei Shabbos Nakabla, was composed by Reb Moshe Cordovero's brother-in-law, who was murdered by an Arab in Svas, the composer of L'Chadoidi, and other works that he wrote. He's the one who introduced his brother-in-law to the teachings of the Kabbalah at the age of 20. Because till then, he dedicated his life to the study of Halacha, Mishnah, Talmud, commentaries on Talmud, books of Jewish law, Rishonim, Achreinim, and he was, he was brilliant, brilliant man. At 20, he brought him in also to the study of the Kabbalah, Reb Moshe Cordovero, and then he rose to become the greatest or one of the greatest Kabbalists of his day, Reb Moshe Cordovero, and created a whole school of Kabbalah and educated many disciples and many students in the field of Kabbalah and wrote many, many works on Kabbalah, including an encyclopedic work that compiled all of the teachings of Kabbalah, of Jewish spirituality that were known until that day, and he turned it into a very systematic and thorough system, like an encyclopedic book, but work is called Pardis Reminim, which means the orchard of pomegranates, the orchard of pomegranates. That's his famous encyclopedic Kabbalistic work of the Ramakra Moshe Cordovero. He also wrote many other works. It's really, uh, it's really, uh, incredible to see how many works this person wrote. Just to give you a list of a few of them. He wrote a work called Elima, Elima, which is a word from Chumash, Parshas B'Shalach, 
it says that the Jewish people, Vayavoyu Elima, this is shortly after the exodus of Egypt, they arrived to a place called Elima, where they found 12 wellsprings and 70 palm trees. And this is what sustained them and hydrated them after a horrible situation where they went three three days without water, etc. They come to this place, there's 12 springs and 70 palm trees. And basically, this book, Elima, also has 12 springs and 70 palm trees because basically it's divided into well springs and palm trees, categorizing Kabbalah in that way. It's called Elima Rapsi, the great Elima. Apparently, this work that we're starting to learn, Taimer Dvaira, he called the palm tree of Dvaira because there's a story in the book of Judges about the great Dvaira, Dvaira Hanavi, Dvaira the prophet. He, Yosheves Tachas Taimer, she was sitting under a palm tree called Taimer Dvaira, the palm tree of Dvaira. And in fact, for millennia, this exact palm tree was known. Many historians wrote about visits to Israel and they pointed out where this palm tree is. Until today, there's still discussions about where exactly the virus palm tree is. So he named it with that. And apparently it's one of, it's referring also to one of the 70 palm trees that he was referring to in his Sefer Elima. And this one particularly is about a person developing his and her midas to align and reflect our creator, as we will see. He wrote another work called Shir Kaima. He wrote a magnum opus called Ur Yakar. 22 volumes, not printed. In manuscript, it was 22 volumes. A commentary on the Zohar, Ur Yakar. Also a commentary on the Sefi Yitzira. He wrote a book I said, Pardis Rimonim, The Orchard of Pomegranates. He wrote a book called Ur Nerov. Ur Nerov is a book about uh, why somebody should become a weir of Pnimius HaTorah, the inner side of Torah, Kabbalah, has seven sections. The Pardis has 72 portals. The Ar has seven sections. He wrote a, called Sefer, he wrote a book called Sefer HaGerishin. This is basically uh, ideas that he developed during meditation outside of his home. He wrote a Sefer called Tefillah Lomosh, commentary on davening. A sefer called Ziv Cheshlamim, a commentary on the service of the Kain God Lanyim Kippur. I would say that the most accessible of all of his works, his works are amazing, most accessible of all of his works is this one, Time Advera. It's a short work, war, work. it's potent, it's powerful, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very practical and relevant to people's life, and it's really about personal refinement, allowing yourself to become the human being who reflects his creator or her creator. The human being being in the visage of God is supposed to reflect God not just through his physical anatomy or his physical anatomy, but also through our characteristics and dispositions and behaviors. Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, as I said, had many, many students. His most famous student was a student for only uh, a very short time, the Arizal. Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, the Arizal, came to Tzvas, he lived in Egypt, he came to Tzvas, born in Yerushalayim, lived in Egypt, came to Tzvas, he's called Arizal, Adonai Rabbeinu Yitzchak Zechern Levrach, he's known as Rabbi Isaac Luria, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria. And these are all these are all scholars of the 16th century, they all live in the 1500s. And Arizal became a student of the Ramak in Kabbalah. He calls him, I think, twice in his writings, Mighty Virabi, my teacher. But only for a short time. But during that short time, he received a lot from Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. Rabbi Moshe Cordovero fell ill in 1570, and he passed away that year on the 23rd day of Tammuz. That's July 1570. He was 48 years old. In the Hebrew calendar, it's Hey Allah from Shin Lamed, 5,330. Five, Hey Allah from Shin Lamed, 5330. That's the year he passed away. When his students asked him on his deathbed, who will succeed you? He said, a person, a person who's going to recognize the pillar of fire at my funeral. And um, they buried Rabbi Moshe Cordovero in Tzfas, in the old cemetery. And when they were taking the coffin to its resting place, they wanted to bury him near some great people who are buried in the cemetery. And the Arizal, who was not very well known, said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't bury him there. And he pointed to another grave where they should bury him. And that's where they buried him. And they asked Arizal, why? And he said, because I see that the pillar of fire that's escorting him 
went to another place. And that's when they realized that he's the successor. And they buried Reb Moshe Kodavero in the place where he is now. If you go to Tzvas and you go to the old cemetery, you'll see Reb Moshe Kodavero's grave. It's dyed with a blue color. It says Rabbi Moshe Kodavero, the Ramak. And in fact, before the Arizal passed away, only two years later, he asked to be buried near the Ramak. And that's why you have the Arizal right near the Ramak. Rabbi Yitzchak Luri and Rabbi Moshe Kodavero right near each other. The Arizal taught Kabbalah for a year and 10 months. He passed away at the age of 38, or even younger, according to some versions. Hey of Shem Lamed Beis, August 1572. Two years after, exactly two years and a month after Reb Moshe Cordovero, less than a month, exactly two years after Reb Moshe Cordovero. And during that two years, Darizal literally revolutionized the landscape of Jewish mysticism. In many ways, he departed from the Ramak and he developed a whole new system of Kabbalah, which in many ways was, was different at least different focuses than his teacher, Reb Moshe Cordovero. At the Levaya, at the funeral of Reb Moshe Cordovero, the Arizal spoke. And this is how he eulogized him. The Chidor writes this. He said, it says in the Parshas Kiseitze, in Deuteronomy, If somebody will, uh, will get the death penalty, so in certain situations, the Torah says they should be hung on a tree. And then they were taken off right away before sunset. So the Arizal interpreted the verse as follows. The word chait means a lack, something is missing. Like, or If somebody will lack the judgment of death, meaning they'll die, but they die. And we don't understand why. We cannot attribute any reason why this person should have died and not live forever. You should attribute it to the Eitz Hadas. <laughs> they died because God decreed death from the moment that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge. And he said this refers to Rabbi Moshe Kodavara. The only reason a person like this passes away is because of the tree of knowledge. Because essentially his body and his soul were so refined that they were conduits for life itself, for divinity, which lives on for eternity, just like the soul. So this is a few words about the author of Talmud Vera, Reb Moshe Kardavero, whose book of ethics we're going to begin um, in the next class. And I wish you all a wonderful and meaningful day. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.